Okay, so today the lecture had to stop because my internet cut out. That was nice and great, so we weren't able to finish this example that we were working on in class. So what I'm going to do is basically start over from the very beginning for this example. We're going to go through in this video and you can skip ahead if you want to skip ahead for where we left off or you can watch it from the start right now. So what we want to do is make these graphs. Let me run my code on the left here and the graph should come up. So currently these are just three graphs that I made, but I can change my script to uh, make eight different graphs. All right, so here we, do, here we go. We have these six pictures that we're going to be looking at. And with those six pictures, we're going to be looking at the velocity that they throw for, for some kind of pitch type. And we're going to be looking at the spin rate for that same pitch type. So in this case, we have the pitch spin, so this, the revolutions per minute, versus the pitch velocity for a forcing fastball. Now, sometimes some of these pitchers only, um, they don't throw some kind of pitch type. So you see in this example, this is for a changeup. Only four of our six pitchers threw a changeup. So some of these pitchers shouldn't be in here. So we're going to have to be a little, um, I don't know. We're gonna have some, we're gonna have to use some ingenuity, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I have to throw back to calc calc two, I think. So we're gonna need to use some ingenuity to modify our legend here to only show the legend entries for the pictures that have to be there. And this caused me a huge headache before, where I could get just the the correct pictures to show up. But these label markers here, that would be incorrect. It took me hours and hours to figure this out. And it's a really simple fix in the end, of course. Um, but hey, you know what? I'm going to defend myself. And, and online, a lot of people struggle with this kind of thing too. With legend entries when you're looping. Anyways, well, we're going to get to that. So here only four pictures are uh, shown here. And in our other graph that we have here, this is for a curveball. And there's only three pictures here. So we only want to throw those or show those three different pictures. All right, so let's get going here. Let me close out of this actually. So what I did to basically start out here, I... Let me actually... Let me do this. So I started out the script uh, just for a few different, a few things in the beginning that we, that you should know how to do now. So the first thing is importing our table. That's simple enough. We just assign a variable, whatever, set it equal to read table, and then we import whatever data that we want to import. Okay, here I did some bookkeeping, so I converted some columns to a string. Um, in this case, it's actually, so it's looking at the column called player name, and I found the unique players that we have. And on the same line of code, I converted it to a string. Next thing, we want to look at the unique pitch type. So what kind of pitches were thrown in this data set? And here, just for convenience, so I don't have too many graphs come up if I don't want to have them come up. Uh, instead of having eight come up all the time, I currently set it to only show three. I'm actually going to change it to just one right now. Now we could define this in a, in a maybe a better way where I say, like have a variable called number of graphs set equal to like one or two, whatever. But mm, who cares? This is fine too. All right. So if we look at some of these things that we just defined here, we have unique pictures. So that's called player. And this is what we have. We have our six unique pictures for the data set that we have here. And the next thing is the pitch name. Let's open that up. We have, currently we have, um, actually it's where our script again. We only have one unique pitch now. Because I updated pitch name to be equal to the very first entry for pitch name here. Let's come with this line out for now. Let's run this again. And now we're going to have the eight different kinds of pitches. But again, I'm going to... Um, have this line here. So once I run the code, I only get one graph that shows up. 
At the very end, we're going to generate all eight of the graphs, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, next thing is initializing or pre-allocating the size for our array. Just making sure that we're recording. That would suck if I wasn't. If I wasn't. So we're going to initialize our arrays. So in this case, I'm going to create empty cell arrays. So I'm doing this because our players here, they show up a different amount of times in our table. So we use a cell array so we can have different sizes of arrays. Um, so we can have all of that. Remember, if, if I was trying to make like a table with all of this data, I want to be able to do that because the amount of rows for each player would be different. Okay, so I'm going to initialize this array called player ID for the player indices. And this is going to be a six by one cell array. Jeez, those is the cheap. So uh, this will contain all of the indices for each player in their respective cell. Man. I swear I'm itching my nose, okay? Next thing is initializing the size for pitch name IND. So we have our six players, and we also have eight different pitch types. Okay, you know what? Let's comment that out, actually. So we have six players, and we have eight different pitch types. So because of this, we want to basically um, initialize our array or pre-allocate this array size for the pitch name indices for each player to be a, what am I going to make it, a, a six by eight. Okay, so let's open this up. This is a six by eight cell array. So we're going to have our six players. That's the amount of rows. And then we're going to have eight columns, which is going to be representative of all of our pitch types. So if we're looking at, let's say, column four here, or sorry, row four, this is going to be for uh, Clayton Kershaw. And this very first column, that'll be all of the indices for when Clayton Kershaw threw a fastball. Okay, that's our first uh, index right there. If I go to like four, uh, row four, column five, That'll be for Clayton Kershaw again. And this will be all of the indices for when he threw a knuckle curve. I think for him, he never throws a knuckle curve. He throws um, a, a regular old curveball. All right, so that's that. Next thing, pitch velo and pitch spin. They're going to be the same size as pitch name IND because now what we're doing is we're actually getting these specific values for each player. So one comma one for pitch spin. That would be for our first player, Shane Bieber. And that would be all of the values for his pitch spin for a four seam fastball. Okay, and we'd keep going on like that. So we did that for both pitch spin and pitch velo. Oh my gosh. My nose hasn't itched all day, and of course now it is. All right, let's go on here. So we initialized everything, and now we're going to start looping. Okay, so let me do this so I'm up towards the top. Okay, so don't do a comment like this on your project. Okay, it's dumb. Don't do it. So do as they say, not as I do. Okay, so let's start looping for stuff that we want to look at. Um, specifically, we want to get the indices for each player, and then we want to get the indices for each type for each player, and then we're going to get the actual values for the pitch velocity and the pitch spin rate. So we're going to do for i equals 1 to length of player. This is going to be a nested for loop, by the way. But currently, we're just going to do for i equals 1 to length of player. And we're going to find the indices for each player. Find indices for each player. Okay, let's call this player IND. So we've already pre-allocated the size for this. It's a six by one cell. So I'm going to say I comma one. That means we're going to have I rows in one column. And we're using the curly brackets because we're making a cell array. And so I'm going to use the find command here. Um, to get our indices. So we're going to say find when t dot player name t dot player underscore name 
is equal to player of i. Okay, we have a, a for statement, so we need to add on our end statement. Get a little space there. Let's run this. And now if we look at player i and d, that just filled up. And let's open this up for the first one. So this is for, if I look at player, that's for Shane Bieber. Let's go to a random row here. This says that he will show up in our table on row 1,333. Let's make sure that's correct. 1,333, that's what I said, right? Player name, Shane Bieber. Cool. Okay, so we have all of the indices for each player. Let's actually go back here. Um, so let's let's we talked about this a few times in class, but let me show something really quick. I'm going to show you how and why we pre-allocated the size. So if I set a breakpoint and I click on Run, now we're going to kind of go uh, pass by pass here. So here we currently have an empty cell array for the player indices. Let's pr let's press Step. It's going to get our first set of indices for our first player. And I see we're down here. We're going to go back up to uh, this line in our loop. So we're in the second pass now. Let's press step. And then we get all of the indices for our second player. So we can keep doing that. And we're going to loop. Um, and it's going to fill in all of these values that we uh, specified. You know, we have these placeholders here. So you, again, you want to do this so your code is more efficient, especially for using a large data set. And you know, our data set has 2,000 rows. Yep. So that's actually not really that large of a data set. But if you have a data set that's like a million rows or something insane, you're going to want to pre allocate the size of your array. Um, and you should just do this for good practice. So if I comment this out when we initialized our array, you see that now we have this squiggly line here which says that this is changing on every size of our loop, consider pre-allocating for speed. So this will speed up our code if we pre-allocate the size. So let's run it like this now, and you're going to see that all of this is going to be empty in the beginning. See, it doesn't exist yet, but once I press step, now the very first value is there. And if I keep pressing step, it's going to uh, increase the size of this cell array for each pass. And again, that's slow. So let's initialize that array. Man, my whole face is itching. Okay. Oh my god. Now my nose. Again. I don't know if I have like a like some dog hair on me or what. Okay, let's let's go on. We're gonna find the indices for the the pitch name now. So we wanna find the indices for each player for the, the ball that they threw, the kind of pitch that they threw. Okay, I need to stop this. I need to find out if there's dog hair on me because I can still feel something. Okay, I'll be back. All right, couldn't find any. Hopefully, it doesn't itch anymore though. All right, let's get rid of that break point. So now we're gonna find, again, the for each player, we're gonna find the indices for when they threw each kind of pitch. So we have the we have each player and we have all of their indices, but now we want to find the indices for each pitch that they threw. So we're going to have to use another for loop now. We're looping through this different kind of um, parameter, which is pitch type. So let's do for j equals one to the length of pitch name. Okay, because we have eight pitch names or pitch types. All right, so now let's, uh, let's say find indices for players. Actually, we'll just say find indices for pitch type for each player. So we already have the indices again for each player, but now we want to find the indices for each pitch type for each player. So we already pre-allocated the size of this, which is a six by eight cell. So let's do pitch name, I and D. We're going to have I columns, which is six, or I always mix them up. We have I rows, which is six, 
And we have J columns, which is eight. And again, we have the curly brackets because we have a celery. Okay, let's do find, just because it's easier to look at um, our results this way. And really the speed difference, the, the knock and speed is really, really negligible, at least for um, a data set of this size. So let's say find one t dot pitch name. Okay, so that's a column in our spreadsheet here. Where 70, 79, there we go. Pitch name. So we're gonna say find one t dot pitch name for our player indices. is equal to let's actually do this I'm gonna do dot 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 that's gonna still kit it's like we're still on the same line but it's gonna put us below just so we can look at everything here so dot 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 equals 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 to pitch name of J okay we had a for statement and you see there's some a squiggly line there it's gonna tell us that we need to have an end statement so end Okay, what is this telling us? Are we missing a, oh, we're missing a parentheses. There we go. Thank you, MATLAB. Let's run this. Cool. Let's go to pitch name IND. And wow, we got it all. Okay, so again, what we're doing here is we're saying find one the pitch name in our spreadsheet for each player. So we're looking at the player indices for each player. And we're looping on I because we have six players. So I want to get the indices for the pitch type for each player. And so we're saying find when that pitch name for each player is equal to pitch name of J. So we have pitch name here and we're looping through J amount of times, which is eight. All right, so let's take a look at this. I know we talked about this today in class, but let's look at a few examples again. So we're checking our work and you should be doing this kind of stuff during your project. <clears throat> All right, let's look at row five, pitch eight. Oh boy, is this Shohei Otani? Let's take a look, I'm pretty sure. So um, player five and then row eight. Um, See, that's yeah, uh, for a split finger. So let's, uh, let's check this out. Let's go to a random row here. I need to open this back up. We're going to need that. Okay, let's go to a random row again. So we see here a number 48. So we just found the, the indices for the um, pitch name type, right? So we have this. This is really telling us that Shohei Otani through a split finger um, fastball at some point. Now this number here, this number 48, is the index or the row for Shohei Otani's player indices. So if I go to player IND, click on row five, because that's for Shohei Otani. Then it says that on row 48 in here, let's go to row 48, that's going to correspond to this number here, which is 367. So now Malib is telling us that for row 367 in our original table, that's going to be for Shohei Otani throwing a split finger fastball. Let's check. I already forget. 367. Okay. 367. Split finger. Cool. Was it Shohei Otani? He's the only one that threw it. So we already know, but let's just check to 367. Shohei Otani. Okay, let's do one more here. So from pitch name, IND. Go over here. Let's look at uh, column 7. So column 7, that stands for our 7th pitch type. That's a slider. Let's do it for our our third player here. So that's our third player is Lucas Giolito. So here these are the indices for Lucas Giolito for the pitch type of a slider. 
So I'll click on this. And remember, these indices that we get here, they really represent the row index for the player indices for Lucas Giolito. So if I go to this row here, I, I'm looking at row 44, and we see a number of 297. So this is telling us that, uh, that we need to go to row 297 for player IND for Lucas Giolito. So he's player 3. Go to row 2, I already forget it again, 297. Got the memory of a damn goldfish. 297. So, we see a number of, of 2050. So row 2050 in our main table, that's for Lucas Giolito throwing a slider. Twenty fifty. We see Lucas Giolito and the pitch type. 250 is a slider. Good. All right. Let's move on again in our for loop here. So we got all the indices now. And now that we have all of our indices, we can start to look at the velocity and the spin rate for each player for each pitch type. All right, so let's uh, call this velocity. And we also already, oh my gosh, this is just insane now. So we already defined the size for pitch velocity, which is also a six by eight accelerate. Um, nice, nice spelling. Okay, so we have pitch velo. And we're gonna do i comma j once again. So this whole time I've been storing all of these values. Remember that we don't have to store all of these values. Like these indices, I don't need them. I just need them in the loop. And these indices, I don't need them. I just need them in the loop. But for something like velocity, even actually velocity, because we're going to be making our loop in this for loop, we don't even need to save all of the values for velocity. And if you look over in my code here, you can see that I have some all my gosh, we have some lines that are commented out. And on those lines, that's when I'm not saving all of the values. So that's kind of using the, the other method where we aren't saving all of the values. It's just absolutely insane. Okay, so pitch velo. So now we actually want to use array addressing with all of the indices that we just found. We want to use the array addressing for each player, for each pitch type to get the velocity. I'm going insane. All right. So t dot release speed. That's the column that we want to look at in our table. I think it's towards the beginning. Yep. Column three, release speed. So we're going to look at that column and now we're going to use ar um, array addressing. So t dot release speed of player ind. That's the indices for each player. Okay. We need to loop through each of the um, arrays in our cell array. So we got to loop through for all of these. And now we're going to use array addressing again, kind of like layered array addressing for the pitch name IND. And we need to loop for this for um, all of the rows that we have and then all of the columns. So player name I comma J. Okay, there we go. All right. All right, that looks good. All right, so let's run this. And let's open up pitch velo. Actually, let's also add on our next line because it's going to be basically the same. I'm actually going to basically copy and paste this line. And I'm going to call this one spin rate. Here we go. Let's call it pitch spin. And all we need to change, oh, it's nothing, that's it. We just need to change this column here because we want to look at the pitch release. Pitch, oh my gosh, pitch spin. 
Let's run it. Let's check some stuff. Let's open up pitch velo. Actually, let's do it for pitch spin. Why not? Let's check one of these. So we'll do uh, this one. Third player, second row. Third player, remember, that's Lucas Giolito. Second column, that's for our pitch type. The second pitch type is a changeup. So let's look at um, this row here. That's uh, row uh, 95. That's uh, we have, we have a value of 81.9 miles per hour. So let's look at row 95 for pitch name I and D for the third row, second column. Why don't we just let row 95, row 95. Row 95, that is for pitch name I and D. So this means that in pitch IND for Lucas Giolito, we need to go to row 279. Let me make this bigger. So for Lucas Giolito, row 279. 279, here we go. And this is telling us that in our main table on row 1975, Lucas Giolito threw a, a changeup. And that changeup value should be a um, a value for the. Oh, oops, I messed something up here. I typed release speed again. This should be release spin rate. Okay, so it's let's uh, let's go back here. So it's telling us that in our main table T on row one thousand four hundred fifty, Lucas Giolito threw a changeup, and it should have a spin rate of. Oh, oh, here we are, of 1,450, yeah, RPM, no, I'm like, wait, I was looking at the wrong thing, sorry, so I'm looking at the right thing now, so in our table on row 1,975, we should see that Lucas Giolito threw a changeup with a spin rate of 1,450 RPM. Let's check. So let's go to row 1,975. 1,975. We have Lucas Giolito. Okay, that's uh, CH. That stands for a changeup, so I know that's correct. But we'll go over here, row 70 or column 79. Here we are. That's a changeup. Now, where is um, pitch spin RPM or release? Pitch, I don't know, what's it called? T, it's a uh, really spin rate, that's it. So I don't know this off the top of my head. So what we can do is we can say, find when T, um, or find when T dot properties dot variable names is equal to release spin rate. Column 57, that's what it says. Let's check it out. Column 57, release, spin rate. What, what line were we looking at? Here, 1,975. 75, here we are. There we go, there's the release spin rate, 1450, which is what we saw here. So we're good. Of course we're good, because we're just using array addressing. We already confirmed the indices before, but I'm just doing it again. Okay, so now we have the velocity and we have the spin rate. So now we're going to work on our plots. After I once again go to the bathroom and see if there's some dog hair that I just can't see. Something's tickling my nose. All right, I'll be right back. All right, no hair. Doesn't exist. Going crazy. So, we have everything that we need now to make our plot. Not really though, you're going to see that we need to do some modification to get our plot to actually show up correctly. So we are going to make our scatter plot within our loop here. Uh, so yeah, let's do it, right? So we want to make J plots or J figures, uh, basically for each pitch type, right? So we're going to basically call out our figure by saying figure of J. So we're going to be looping through to create uh, figure one, figure two, fi figure three, figure four, and so on. 
Let's add a little comment here. So make j plots by pitch name. All right. Now let's make our scatter plot. Scatter it. Yep. So let's say scatter. Of uh, we want to have uh, the the velocity on the x axis. So pitch velo. Get out of here. Pitch velo. I comma j. Okay. So we're looking at. Didn't have it open. Here we are. So we're looking at this. Okay. I want to get all of that pitch velocity. Um, it's not showing everything right now. Let me run this. Dang it. I was looking at something else um, before I came back. So that's why it was empty. So we're looking at all of this. So it just made eight plots for us. You know, that gets annoying. So I'm actually going to now um, change this so it's only one plot. So you see this also changed in size because we're only looking at one plot here which is going to be for the forcing fastball. Okay, so let's go back here. So we want to do a scatter plot where the velocity is on the x-axis. And you know, you'll see here that once we make our plot, oh my gosh. So we still have i from one to six, and this time j. Well, j is from one to the length of pitch name. The length of pitch name right now is only going to be one. So we only have j, Amount of rows, which is one. Okay, so here let's do pitch spin for i comma j, and same thing with the velocity. We're only going to have one column there. Here we go. All right, so there we go. And oh yeah, let's add on a an option here of filled. So our dots that we have, they're going to be totally filled in. All right, let's run this. Here we go. Here's our plot. Um, we only have one of them here. Why? I didn't say hold on. At first, I was a little confused. So we need to say hold on, right? We want to continue to plot uh, for all of our i amount of players. So we say hold on. There we go. So there we go. So basically, what what was happening here is we calculate the pitch velocity and the pitch spin for all of our players. We have I amount of players, six players, and then it plotted this for, this is our jth plot. We only have one so far. This is for a four seam fastball. Uh, let's actually change this to two plots. So we're gonna say for one to two, that'll be for a four seam fastball and a change up. And now, since we have figure of J, you know, we're looping through and we're making our first plot, so that's when j is equal to 1, and we're going to loop through again, and then we're going to make our second plot when j is equal to 2. All right, then you see, of course, we have another column here for our second pitch type. So this is number 1, this is number 2. Now, you see over here we have six different colors for six pitchers that threw a forcing fastball, and here we only have four different colors, only four pitches or pitchers threw a changeup. Uh, before we talk about our legend, let's add in our X label and our Y label and a title. A little far down here. So X label. That's our velocity in miles per hour. Y label. That's our spin rate in RPM. And title. We're going to call this pitch spin. Mm, let's capitalize it. Pitch spin versus pitch. Oh my gosh. Versus, oh my. Insane. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, pitch velo. Um, four. We put in a space because this will allow us to have it like um, not smushed in our title. Four, num to string. So now we want to say for what kind of pitch type it was. So pitch name of I, okay, uh, or J. We have J pitch names. And let's balance our brackets and our parentheses. Let's 
run this again. And now we have our titles and our X legend and our Y legend. Okay, there we go. Now let's talk about the actual legend part. Did I say X legend and Y legend? I meant X label and Y label. All right, so let's talk about the legend. If I say legend of get out of here, player of I, because we have I players. So let's do player of I. We run that. Look, we only get one player. That's that's the ith player, right? So that's our very last player. If I do just player, that's our string array. <clears throat> One, it's slower, and um, two, you know, and you get all these nasty warnings. They're disgusting. So two, there's only four players here that threw a changeup, but it's showing all of our players because we said make the legend the string array of player, which is all six players. We want this to only show the players that actually threw a changeup. Now, of course, you could look at these colors here and be like, okay. Um, Otani didn't throw a changeup, and Kershaw didn't throw a changeup. Is that true, by the way? Let's let's check. Um, pitch name IND. So, player four and five. Okay, that is true. Where is a player in here? Four and five. Yep. So yeah, you could see like okay, there's no purple dot and there's no green dot. Kershaw and Otani didn't throw a changeup, but. You know, we don't want it to look like this. We actually want these to be out of here. We only want to have our legend consist consisting of the players that threw a changeup. So let's work on that. Also, what you could have done is one, two, I. Now there's no warnings in your legend or in your command window, but it's the same exact issue that we just had. Um, now, when I was looking this stuff up, to find a way to address this issue, um, you know, I saw this for, for one of the answers being one to I. Now, the thing is, is that this will only work if if everything is formatted correctly. So you could have like um, empty cell arrays. I think it's it's either at the beginning or the end. I think it's at the end. So if I look at like pitch below, we could add in some code to say like if there's an empty um, array here to put that at the end. And that would work, but that's going to require a lot more code to, to do that. I probably seem like a freak right now because my, my nose is itching so much. I swear I'm, I'm not. But yeah, this is really annoying. Okay, so what we're going to do is we want to modify our code. So it's actually just going to put in our legend the pictures that threw each kind of pitch type. All right, excuse my language in the left-hand side here. So what we're first gonna do, if we're still in our loop, we want to find, find when we have a logical true, find when a logical true, for when a, for when a player threw a pitch type, each pitch type. All right, so I'm gonna say, I don't know, type true. That's what we'll call it. And we have I rows and J columns. I don't need to make this accelerate anymore because our output is either gonna be a one or a zero, a logical one or a logical zero. So basically we're gonna make a, a whole new array here uh, to check if it's uh, true, if a player threw um, some kind of pitch type. So we, we should also actually initialize this array. So let's go up here. I mean, this one is so basic. It, it, it doesn't matter that much, no, for this type, but let's stay consistent. So it's not a cell array. So we're just gonna say zeros of, actually, yeah, zeros is fine. Okay, so we'll do zeros of six comma, uh, we don't want a hard code. Let's do length of player then length of pitch name. Okay, don't worry about that. We, we need to actually carry out our line of code, but let's open up 
Uh, let's get rid of this one. I'm gonna get rid of that too. Let's open up what we just created. And type true. Uh, it's gonna run this up. It'll show up. It's, it's not showing up right now because of this error. So, uh, anyways, so let, let's let's fill this out right here. So we have type true. And again, we want to check one if if a player threw each uh, pitch type or not. Okay, so we have type true, and now we're gonna say not is empty. Let's comment this out. Okay. Um, why am I getting an an error line twenty four? Or maybe it's because I have the word true here. Um, let's see. Truth? Is truth okay? Oh, jeez. Blame the, blame the time. There we go. So type truth. Okay. And now it's in our workspace. Here we go. This is an empty 6x2 because we're only including two uh, pitch types right now. And that's a line that says well. So let's go to pitch below. So what we're going to do right now is check... Um, we're going to basically find all of the, the indices for when a celerate is not empty. So if we just have is empty, that'll give us a logical one true if a cell is empty in some matrix or celerate. But we want to find all of the times when a cell is um, actually contains some values. So we're going to say basically find when it's not empty. So we use the tilde operator. So we're going to say not empty of pitch velo i comma j. Are my, oh, it's in the parentheses. And I don't want the figure to keep showing up. You see, if I run this right now, that's going to pop up. Oh, I think I, I think it's saying this because I didn't, initialize as a logical array. This is actually a matrix, not a logical array. I forget the, the command to make a logical, to initialize it basically a logical array, so we're not gonna worry about it in this video. All right, so let's check the results. So type, I mean, oh, maybe it's because I put type true, not type truth. But this is, this should still probably not be zeros. I mean, it still works though. So if we look at this now, type truth. Oh, you see, it's actually a six by two double. We don't want that. We want it to be logical. So let's comp this out again. Sorry. And now you see it's a six by two logical. Okay, I don't want those figures to keep coming up. So we're actually going to use our visible off command. So something else that we can do is. I'm really sorry that I'm, like, everything itches slash tickles right now. I swear I didn't do anything, okay? I promise. All I've been doing is work all day. So, let's say get current figure. And this is going to get properties for the current figure that we're generating. So, get current figure. So we have h equals gcf. gcf, that's the command to get current figure, all of the properties for it. And we're assigning this to a variable called h. You could call it any, anything now. So let's say set, that's also a command here. So we're going to say set, get current figure, and now we're going to, um, we can specify the size that we want using the position command. So we'll say position, zero, zero, that's where the figure is going to show up on your desktop. And then we're going to specify the width to be 750, and then the height to be 500. And let's say we're going to have visible and then off, because I don't want them to keep showing up right now. Okay, let's press run. You see like flashes up there like, like that, um, just because it's generating the figure, but then you see it, it went away. So, yep, that's good. All right. So we want to find when it's true for when a player threw each pitch type. So let's check this out. For a forcing fastball, remember that's our first pitch. 
all of our players through a Force and Fastball. For a changeup, players 4 and 5, Kershaw and Otani, they never throw a changeup. So we have a logical 0. So for that second grab for a changeup, we only want to have in our legend the first three players and then our last player. All right, so now we find basically, or we found um, if a player did or didn't throw um, a, p a certain pitch type. Now we're going to basically use array addressing for our legend. Okay, so what we're going to do for this, we have logical true. Now let's use array addressing to actually get the specific player name um, for if they threw each pitch type. So get player names for when they threw a pitch type. Okay, I'm, I'm totally doing, by the way, what exactly you shouldn't be doing, which is touching your face all the time. But it's almost like when you're, when you want to sleep and like everything like itches then. Anyways, uh, so let's say, um, I don't know, truth player, let's just say that, truth player, and we're going to set this equal to player, so we're using array addressing, I want to look at this player string array that we have, and remember, we can use a logical true as a way of, of, uh, of array addressing, so for the first pitch type, we can use all of this as array addressing, so for the first pitch type of a fastball, we can type in here, um, type truth, okay? So type truth, and I want to do this for all of the the rows that we have in each in in each column. So uh, column J. So if I run this now, now let's look at truth player, and this is going to be a string array. So for the for our first um, column. We have, uh, or actually, this is the last one. Sorry. See, this looped to uh, for, it looped for the first J, which is a forcing fastball, and then it looped for the second J or the second pitch type, which is a changeup. So we see only these four players. You see that we don't have Kershaw and we don't have um, Otani, but we don't want it to uh, loop through like this. We actually could for how. Um, this is, but let's say that we want to save all of the values, so I'm going to do um, i, yeah, I'll do i, comma j. Actually, I didn't even do it in my script. I didn't save all of this, so we'll actually leave it um, just in case there's an error and I have to I have to debug it on the fly. So I'm not going to save all of the values here because it doesn't matter because we're actually creating our plot here too. For in, in each loop. So we don't need to save all of the values because um, as we continue to make each pass, uh, this value will be uh, created and then we can pass all of these strings here in the string array to our legend. So let's do that right now. I have a comment called apply legend and let's just say a legend of that's going to be truth player. All right. And now let's change this to visible on, and our figures should work out now. And there you go. Oh, what the hell? 750, 500, isn't that good? That's what I had here, right? Why is it all weird? Oh, hmm, strange. So here's our first one for the four seam fastball. Every player threw one once again. And for our changeup, we have only four players. So remember, Kershaw and, and Otani did not throw a four seam fastball. Now, this is totally correct. And something I just noticed kind of on the fly, maybe we would want the colors to be the same for each player, loop by loop. So you see... Uh, Jacob DeGrom here, he was a light blue, and here he's a, a purple, but that's because, you know, the first value in the legend is going to be blue, second is going to be red, third uh, kind of orange, 
fourth purple, and then fifth green, sixth uh, light blue. Um, you can probably change this value too with some legend property, but mm, that would take more effort. And it doesn't really matter if we're looking graph by graph, but something I just kind of thought of on the fly. So here we saved all the values. I shouldn't need to save these though either, because we're going, um, this is, we don't need to save them all, because we're going to, we're going uh, pass by pass to create our figure. So we can solve for this, which will solve for this. And then we uh, apply that to our legend. So let's run this again. <laughs> okay, uh, so it didn't work. Uh, is it because I, no, I didn't initialize it there. Um, so yeah, we're getting an error. So let's actually save these values. Oh, it's actually probably because of this. Um, yeah, it is. So, you know, we're specifying the size over here. So we actually need to have the size over here as well. Um, okay, we'll actually address that in just a second here, but let's do this for all of our uh, pitch types now. So let's basically comment this line out. So we're gonna have eight, fig uh, eight figures now. All right, here we go. Here's our first one. So we already saw this before. It's for a four-seam fastball. Here is for a change-up. We have four players um, that were graphed, and then we have four people in the legend. Here we have three players. Yep. You see, there's a green in here, and there's a purple. I swear I haven't seen that. Yeah, I def this definitely didn't happen in my other script. Okay, let's see. Let's hopefully I can figure this out on the fly. If this is one to four. Let's see what happens. Okay, all these are good. Jeez. I'm not sure what I just pressed accidentally. Okay. What did I change? This is gonna be... Yeah, no. It's like I need to go back and I need to check my my own video again let's see what I have over here hmm. let's run it again Yeah, so also you see this says Jacob DeGrom right now. He shouldn't be in here. Um, well, actually, no, he should. Yeah, this is, these are the correct people, but you see, I shouldn't have this purple marker. This should be light blue. <laughs> okay, um, before I pause the video and I figure out what I apparently just messed up, let's look at my, this what I thought was the same code over here. Let's plot all eight graphs and see if this is correct. So let's comment that out. Let's run this. Oh, I need to go back and go back in. And now let's run it. Okay. This is number one, good. Where's our change up? Here's our change up. Look at this, so this is correct, right? We see Bieber is blue, Bunty is red, Giolito, orange, DeGrom, purple. There's only one for the split finger, and we know that was Otani from earlier in the video. This is good. Cutter, there's only <laughs> three of these, and there's only uh, Shane Bieber, good. Knuckle Curve, also only Shane Bieber. He throws a lot of those. Only him, good. The Slider. 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six players, so all of them, and we have all six there. That's good. And our curveball, we have Bundy, Kershaw, and Otani. All of the colors are good once again. And then we have just a sinker, Dylan Bundy. All right, so let me check if I can actually see the error right now. So if I go up top here. Okay, I hope this is commented out. That's fine. All right, so blame the time or something. I forgot our if statement, that's why. Because, so over here you see that I have this if statement. Having the if statement, that's going to say, if this is true, then do something, right? Remember that we went over that in class. So we have our two for loops, and then um, right here I should have it, so. Yeah. Okay, right here. So let's make our if statement here. So we're gonna say if um, not is empty. So remember if I say not is empty, that's basically saying if a, if a, in this case, a seller rate is filled with some values. So if not, if not is empty of pitch velo, I comma J. Now I could also put like pitch spin, or I could even say uh, pitch name, IND. I could use any one of those because basically what we're looking at here is we want to find or look at the sell arrays for when there's a cell that is not empty. So basically all of these, then these, and then this one. All right. So we have our if statement there and we're looping for I and J. So that's basically saying um, basically if um, a salary for like pitch velo or again pitch name ind or pitch spin I chose pitch velo I don't know why we could say for pitch name ind too let's do that pitch name ind okay so we're saying again if a cell in here is filled with some value then we're gonna make the figure for that so let's uh we're gonna have to shift all of these over Okay. Yep, 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 yep. And then we're gonna need to have our end statement, right? Because we just had an if statement. So let's go over, dang it. Let's go over here, type an end. Hmm, that seems new. I've never noticed this before, where I just put an end and line 45 is in my view and it actually shows it right there. It's kind of cool. All right, so let's run this again, and hopefully this works now. Cool. Line 45. All right. That was it. I'm just missing that parentheses. Let's run it. Yay. That was it. Okay. Very small error. So we see Jacob deGrom. He's now showing up, and he's purple. So now our color markers are correct. Now let's do it for all eight graphs. Let's make sure it looks good. I guess I could just, I'll just delete that. Okay, so for all eight graphs, let's run it. Fastball, looks good. Change up, good. Cutter, good. Knuckle curve, good. Slider, all six, good. Curveball, three, all the colors are good. Sinker, just one, good. Split finger, just one, good. Also, if you wanna make sure that the, the colors match with the players and that part is actually true and valid, we can check that too. You know, the only thing that's changed right now is I have a light on that I never have on. And I don't know, like, that shouldn't change anything, but I noticed my room smelled a little different. I don't know if it's from the light. Okay, maybe a little. Like, who cares, but. Okay, I'm gonna run this, and we'll look at it for 
the uh, splitter. Oh no, or not the splitter, the slider, because only Otani threw a splitter. Okay, let's look at these values for the slider. Kind of interesting. Giolito has a much lower, maybe not much lower, but a lower spin rate than the other four pitchers here, other five pitchers. Pitchers. Let's see, we have blue, and there's one, red, two, orange, three, purple, four, green, five, light blue, six. Okay. So let's look at like one of these values over here. Let's look at this value here. This is 93.5 miles per hour. So we could check that that is actually for Jacob DeGrom. We can go in our command window and we can say find when t dot release speed because that's the velocity. Find when t dot release speed is equal to 93.5 because that's what we just had. Is that correct? Yep. And then we can also say, instead of like seeing all of the values, if there's multiple of them, we can say, and t dot player name equals uh, the Grom Jacob. I, need, I might need to put that in quotes. Yeah, let's do like this. The Grom Jacob. All right, so he has uh, two of them that come up. So at some other point here, he threw another one that was 93.5 miles per hour. See this one? No. This one? Who cares? Okay. Let's check though. Let's go over here. Um, and we'll do, we'll go to our table. So 304 for our table T. Three oh four. We have. Let's make sure that it's a slider. Okay, you see it's a slider right there. And let's check the pitcher. Oops, what's his ID? Pitcher Jacob Degrom. So maybe a lot of pitchers though had. Uh, threw that at ninety three point five. I doubt it, but let's just find in our table when this occurs. So there are a fair amount actually. I bet they're all from DeGrom though. Let's find out. So I can actually modify this and do, we're gonna say t.playerName when that release speed was equal to 93.5. Wow, really? I'm shocked for some of these players like Dylan Bundy and because I'm shocked, I actually want to verify that this is true. So let's do, we're going to make this a vector. So in one column, we're going to have the name. And then the other column, I don't know if this is actually going to work. Maybe I need to make this a table. And the other column, I want to make this the, the, uh, the index for our table. So find t dot release speed equals equals 93.5 okay yeah, i see it says that they need to be the same type all right that's okay let's i could make a table and that would work can i I actually just say, let's say A equals table. Let's go to the end. Hmm, I wonder if that would have worked. Uh, making tables is a little weird sometimes when you like make it line by line. So let's just do, just do it this way. A, oh jeez, A will be the player name, okay, and 
b this will be the index so find my t dot uh know why there are so many geez um i didn't specify for the pitch type that's why again blame it on the time guys i don't know so let's do let's clear all this out let's just type in find when t dot release speed equals 93.5 equals equals 93.5 and when t dot pitch i think it's called maybe it's pitch type no i think it's pitch name pitch name equals equals a slider only shows up one time okay there we go so before um why did i type that one time what was this What was, what did I type when we got two values? Not that one. Here, this one. Okay, so basically to Grom, he threw a pitch that was 93.5 miles per hour two times. It doesn't matter, this isn't depending on the pitch type, it's just saying that he threw some pitch that much or that fast uh, two times. So let's do actually, um, let's call this, okay, I'm gonna rewrite this. So A is gonna update now. And then we can use array addressing here to see what kind of pitch types those were. So we're gonna do T dot pitch name of A. There we go. So he, Jacob deGrom, he threw a slider at 93.5 miles per hour, that's what we were just looking at in our graph. And he also threw a change up at 93.5 miles per hour, because he's insane. And if we want to check that, if I doubt anyone's even watching anymore, but let's just check this too, right? So, um, the, we already saw 304, we saw that, that was a slider, and that was Jacob deGrom. So we see Jacob deGrom, make sure it's a slider, there to slider. Now let's check row 1299. So that should be a change up this time. 1299. Look at that. We got a change up. Let's make sure it's the Quran. It's the Quran. Oh, right here. The Quran. Was I looking at the wrong one? 79, or not, wait, 70, yeah, column 79, row 1,299, it's a change up, and we just saw that it was DeGrom, DeGrom, now let's look at the release speed, release speed, 93.5, so everything looks good for our graphs, we'll run it one more time, take a look at them, just for funsies, Okay, only, only Otani for the split, because he's a legend. For some fastball. Everyone and their mother. Change up. Most people. This is a little surprising that it's only Shane Bieber. Knuckle curve. Shane Bieber. Slider. Everyone. Curveball. Uh, we got Kershaw. Look at that spin rate. Wow. And a uh, sinker. All right. So that's uh, it for the video. This was really in depth, more in depth than we would have done in class, but I had unlimited time. Although I should, I have to do my own homework too. But oh god, yeah, I still need to do a lot of homework. All right. So that's it though. So hopefully this helped. And next time in class, ooh, a little sneak peek. If if anyone is watching, probably not. But a little sneak peek for what we're going to do next class. So some people, they don't like baseball, which is kind of sad, but whatever. I'm going to change my layout to default. So next class, what we're going to be doing is looking at TV show data, specifically Breaking Bad. So we're going to make these two plots. Yummy, yummy. Okay, one of them is the IMD ratings per episode, per season. It's going to be a heat map because you got to make a heat map on your project quite a lot. 
so we can see season by season what the ratings are. So look at this final season. Just great. This episode is season 3, episode 10. I think that's Fly. I would have to check again. I'm pretty sure. That's a 7.6. We could check right here. There it is. It's Fly. So we have this heat map for episodes and season. And here we have a scatter plot, which you'll also be doing on your project. Something similar to this. And here you see the rating on this axis for the episode. And here are the number of votes and our legend also shows the season for each uh, color that we have. So you see, um, for the last season, man, there was a lot of people putting in their ratings on IMDb. And you can see most of the time, you know, we're sticking around here for the amount of votes or ratings. But also here, Fly, it actually went out a bit, right? A fair amount of people voted on this probably because they hated it so much. What was this one? Man, well, that was season one. I wonder what episode that was. You know, we could actually put this in and automate it, but um, yeah, I didn't do it. I just did the more standout ones. All right, so anyways, we're gonna be doing this um, next class. All right, see you then. I'm just talking to myself. Well, I have been the whole time, but yeah. Also, Apologies for the sniffing and the itching this entire time. I really don't know why I all of a sudden started getting itchy during the video. During the video. Anyways, see you next class.